Hey guys, so it's Jan here from Laser Gaming. This video, I want to talk about the They Shall Not Pass DLC. Sort of my opinion of it, first impressions of it, as you've played on three of the four maps and basically used all the weapons in the DLC. The only content that we haven't seen yet is the new uh, hero or the new elite class in this game, and that's going to be the sort of infantry one. Um, that's able to melee people and run around super fast, so we haven't been able to see that But we've pretty much seen everything else that there is to see in this DLC And I'm just gonna go into sort of the content breakdown and then tell you whether I think the DLC is worth it or not So there's four maps on this DLC. There is Soissons, there's Fort de Vaux There's Verdun Heights and then there's also Rupture which is the map that this game plays on. Um, this game plays basically just of uh, the Labelle 1886, all from one game. I've gotten pretty good at this sniper on this game. I've gotten some pretty nice clips with it. But the last map is Rupture. Um, the five new weapons that we have are to start off the Labelle, uh, the weapon that we see in this footage right now, and that's the new sniper rifle in the game. We have the Ribby Roll um, automatic submachine gun or carbine. Um, and that's the new assault class. We have the Yagrin shotgun, which is a semi-automatic shotgun. If you guys haven't seen, I have gameplay of all these weapons in individual videos on my channel. Um, we also have the RSC semi-automatic medic rifle, and then we also have the Shosho light machine gun. Now, as far as the um, how good these weapons are, they each do fulfill a new role, pretty much. Um, the Yagrin is one of the better semi-automatic shotguns in the game, um, especially as far as its one-hit kill range goes. Um, the Shosho light machine gun is the slowest firing um, LMG, but it also has um, the highest damage, so it's a three-shot kill, so that one's actually really good too. Um, the Ribby Roll is very good since it has the best range out of any um, submachine gun with relatively low recoil and still a pretty decent fire rate. Um, it also has extremely low recoil when you put that bipod on. And then the Labelle is the only sniper rifle with 8 rounds in the magazine. It's kind of a hybrid between all the sniper rifles go. Um, the sweet spot's between 50 and 87.5 meters. Um, the fire rate's 56. It's kind of a balance between all the snipers, and it's honestly my favorite sniper right now. Uh, that could just be because um, it's a new sniper and I like it a lot, but it is one of the better snipers in my opinion. Um, then we also have the MLE 1903 Extended, which isn't really noteworthy at all. It's just the MLE-1903 with an extended mag. Um, we also get a new game mode, Frontlines, which we haven't seen, but I did break down that game mode in another video earlier. Uh, it's basically just sort of a mix between Operations and Rush, and it looks like a really cool game mode, in my opinion, that'll bring something new to the table. Um, we have the new Elite class that'll likely take place on all the maps. Um, the new Behemoth, which is the Char 2C tank, which is absolutely huge, but I haven't even really used it that much. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a game changer or any reason to buy this DLC. Um, and we also have two new operations coming, which I'm super hyped for. Uh, operations is my favorite game mode in this game. And to get two new operations from this DLC, uh, considering that there's only uh, four in the game right now, uh, it's pretty significant in my opinion. Now as far as the price goes for this DLC, it'll cost $15. It's going to come out sometime in March, and it's going to come out two weeks earlier for premium members. And I do think this DLC does bring a lot of new content to the table. Um, as someone who's played this game, not too much, but a decent amount, I'm um, like rank 45, uh, I do find the content to get stale at times, and I really do find the DLC really will keep the game uh, relevant for me, and allow me to come back and keep, back play keep playing without getting bored. And that's really the main reason why I will buy the DLC, just because it really refreshes the game for me and it brings a lot of new content to the table. Um, if you're someone who really enjoys the content in the game right now and you don't feel that the game's lacking any content, I'd the only reason why I would buy the DLC is just because some of the weapons are a bit better. Um, they, you, there's also assignments to unlock the weapons that'll keep you busy. But if you're someone who has kind of grown distant from the game but would like to get back to it, I'd for sure buy this DLC because it really does provide new content for you that you couldn't really get anywhere else. And it's just, it does really refresh the game. I really do wish that DICE would release it for free, um, just because it would allow everyone to come back to the community. Um, as we've seen in Timefall 2, a lot of people have gone back to play their Live Fire DLC. Um, I'm going to get to that once I get through a lot of this DLC content I'm currently reviewing and playing right now. But 
realistically they can't really do that from a business standpoint so is this worth $15? I'd say it provides plenty of content for $15 um, but will you end up playing it? That kind of depends on whether you're satisfied with the game right now or if you really feel that the game's lacking content and you want something new. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe if you are new here. But that's what it is for you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.